Six years have now passed since the launch of the 20 series, and while DLSS and ray tracing revolutionised gaming, the improvements since then have been taken to unprecedented levels. Today we're going to test out the performance of the latest DLSS with ray tracing and see how many frames we can get out of some systems. Now you've probably heard of RTX by now, but just in case you've been living under a rock, RTX is Nvidia's cutting edge platform that integrates advanced features like ray tracing and AI technology such as DLSS, and as it stands today there's over 500 games that supports RTX, which helps deliver insane graphics and super fast performance, and sets a pretty high standard in the gaming industry. Ray tracing is a term we've all come pretty familiar with since its release back in 2018, but in simple terms, it's a clever way of rendering shadows and light by simulating and tracking every ray of light produced by a light source. In game, it typically looks like a glow emitting from a light or a realistic reflection in a puddle or a window. But when it's all working together, you do get some pretty breathtaking scenery. Take the scene from Cyberpunk, for example. It's one of my favorite areas to explore, and it's entirely because the ray tracing just makes it look absolutely stunning. You've got all the different lights emitting their own hues, puddles on the ground reflecting what's around them in real time, and it all just works together beautifully. But DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, utilizes Nvidia's AI technology to enhance performance. By rendering frames at the lower resolution and then using sophisticated AI algorithms to upscale them to display native resolution, DLSS achieves significantly higher frames. The introduction of DLSS with the 20 series was definitely a pioneering step, though it did come with its share of challenges. Initially, the technology offered a noticeable boost, but quite often at the expense of image clarity, and this would manifest in the form of a very slightly blurry or soft looking image. This was a common critique with gamers, and even though everybody's seen the massive potential that it offered, it did need a little bit more work. DLSS 2.0, however, did mark a substantial difference. This version utilised a more sophisticated neural network and improved training methods, resulting in clearer and sharper images, which were almost indistinguishable from the native resolutions. 2.0 also offered better scalability, allowing it to be more effectively implemented across a wide range of games and resolutions. The technology became more versatile and reliable, gaining broader acceptance among gamers and developers alike. This iteration significantly improved the balance between performance and image fidelity, but with the 40 series, Nvidia continued to push what was possible. The latest versions introduce even more advanced AI algorithms, further enhancing both image quality and performance. The improvements of 3.0 and 3.5 are not just incremental though, they represent a substantial leap forward in AI powered graphics. But if all that technical talk doesn't do too much for you, here are the results of benchmarking the latest DLSS software in Cyberpunk, Alan Wake 2, Fortnite, and Ghosts of Tsushima. The PC was running a 4080 Super with a 14th Gen i7, and the results actually blew me away to be fair. All the games were running on maximum settings of 4K, and DLSS was also set to whichever highest performance mode was available in-game. Cyberpunk went from an average of 37 FPS to an insane 130, bear in mind that was using the in-game benchmarking tool, and maybe I'm just getting old, but honestly I could not tell the difference visually between these two benchmarks. It's it's nuts. Alan Wake 2 is a pretty similar result, an average of 39 FPS all the way up to 112 FPS. This game doesn't have a benchmarking tool, or at least I couldn't find one. The benchmark was ran during the introduction of the game, which as far as I understand involves one of the most graphically demanding zones. Fortnite went from 78 to 92, and finally Ghosts went from an average of 63 FPS to an absolutely mind-blown 163 FPS. That was during the prologue battle scene too, that's a jump of 100 frames. I also performed the same test on a more budget-friendly system, running an RTX 4060 and a Ryzen 4500 at 1080p. Again, massive performance boosts across the board with Cyberpunk Ultra, doubling from 51 to 106. Alan Wake more or less quadrupled, running at high settings at 21 FPS to 87 FPS. Fortnite went from 47 to 64 and Ghost went from an already respectable 57 on very high settings to an average of 119 FPS. Results are obviously both extremes of the spectrum for test and sake. I wouldn't expect everybody to be running a 2080 Super with super performance mode enabled, but that's kind of the beauty of it, you know, you've got so many options to toggle through and people can just find their preferred balance. And if you're thinking truly you can't get crazier than that, Nvidia CEO recently spoke at a 2024 Computex where he hinted at the possibility of conjuring up entire NPCs and textures in game, claiming that Nvidia are only just scratching the surface when it comes to AI powered gaming. 
That means some of your old favourite games might get an AI powered facelift in the near future as well. There's also the recently announced G Assist, which offers real time gameplay and optimization tips. Something along the lines of Microsoft's Copilot that shows you around the computer, but an in game assistant helping you understand mechanics, provide instructions, and even detect hardware to optimise graphical settings. I think it's fair to say we're living in pretty crazy times here. But how are you feeling about it? Let us know in the comment section. Maybe subscribe if you like this one, and we'll catch you in the next one.